Hey guys, Rod here at A Better Way to Farm, where we help growers improve yield and increase profit. Guys, I this was uh, brought about by two things that happened together simultaneously today. I found an article here that I was reading on the internet to try to read a lot and come up with ideas and see what's going on out there all the time. And I was talking to one of my guys down in uh, Missouri, and he said he was sitting in line at the ethanol plant getting ready to unload a load of corn for at $6.60 a bushel. And it really kind of got me to thinking. And then as I looked on AgWeb and I found an article about how to keep your $6 corn happy with a big question mark. And he was like, use your starter. That's Ken Ferry talking, use your starter. Guys, here's the bottom line. Jerry Cox often is quoted, he, he says he never wants his corn to have a bad day or his beans to have a bad day. So what do we want to do, especially with $6 corn? Uh, well, I mean, Ferry just flat out says, when you pull back or drop out DAP completely, you may not see any visual differences in corn growth or even in yield, but you will see a reduction in soil test values. But if you cut the starter, look out, you're going to see a difference in emergence and growth because of the horsepower that starter fertilizer provides. He says five gallon of starter will get a bigger kick than 300 pounds of broadcast DAP. That's interesting. So if you're only gonna do one or the other, which one is it that we think we wanna do? Do we wanna do the 300 pounds broadcast at however many dollars that's gonna cost? And yet we could do something that costs way less and get a bigger kick and replace some of that, that uh, phosphorus that we need there. He is very open. He says, you've got to be very careful if you go in with an inferro product because you've got to pay attention to salt burn. Guys, there are a lot of starters out there who were not built. They were not built to go on the seed, but they were built to go two by two. Now, what do we know? We know from the fertilizer handbook that while placing it two by two is three times more efficient than broadcast, we know that going in the seed trench is five times more efficient than broadcast. So the question becomes, what do we gotta have to put in that seed trench that's safe? Another thing that he says to talk about, my good friend Josh from out in Nebraska stumbled on this some time ago, but uh, he said seed samples that have more than a 6% pericarp damage, you need to be very careful with, especially going in furrow and especially if it's dry uh, conditions. What that pericarp damage means is that the seed has a tear at the embryo axis and this seed will succumb very quickly to salt burn. And so there are people who are having their seeds tested to make sure that they don't have that problem. He says based on test results that he would recommend on test plot results, he recommends using zinc in all starters containing phosphate. I understand how he arrived at that I don't agree with that because here's the deal. We can go out here and run a lot of tests and get a lot of responses. But the test that I think we need to run is the soil test and let the soil test tell us exactly what we need. Yes, we have a lot of guys, probably the lion's share of the guys need to put zinc with their starter. We have some guys who have rather high zinc levels and not very high phosphorus levels and in that circumstance, applying zinc is not only unnecessary, it might not be very, might not get us a very good result. And so I believe strongly in that soil test and making sure that we do it. This is something that he said, our starter trials had strong responses this past year. Even though tar spot killed the plants, he adds, I'm not sure why, but my guess is pushing maturity up seven days may be met grow more grain fill before the plant shut down. Guys, using our system, using the right micronutrients based on the soil test, using the right starter fertilizer, putting it in the right position, the four R's do work if we actually practice the four R's. If we do all of that, we are gonna speed up maturity. And that can be important for a lot of reasons. If you live up north, some of you guys are, you know, getting, getting it more mature means it gets drier and you can get after it quicker before the snow comes. Maybe it means that it gets mature before it frosts. Maybe it just means wherever you live, you can go to the field quicker and start harvest a little bit quicker and get dry corn. But the fact of the matter is, one of the big things that you don't think about is, what happens if tar spot comes in? That crop that's seven days further down the road 
is going to get hurt less than the one that's seven days behind. And so doing this is going to make things work better on every front. The fact of the matter is this, guys. It is never wrong to do the right thing. And I know that inputs are outrageous. I get that. I understand that. The question becomes, what's the best use of my dollar? I had someone in this business several years ago. I had the pleasure of riding with Melvin all the way across Nebraska once. And Melvin was a very successful farmer and I was new in the business. And I said, Melvin, um, give me one piece of advice to give a new grower. And he said, absolutely. I know without, I mean, instantly he's like, I know what it is. He's like, row place your nutrients first. And if you have any money left over, then broadcast. See, most of the industry says broadcast your nutrients. And if you have anything left over, then spend that money on row placed. Melvin says that's backwards, and I am in no position to argue with him because he was very successful, very, very successful. And I believe strongly that what he said is one of the secrets to getting the most out of every year. We know that years vary. We know that there are challenges. We know right now that prices are high, but we also know that there are fundamentals. And if we do the fundamentals the best, we win the most games. That's the bottom line. So let's go ahead, do the fundamentals. Let's take a chance and maybe go take a look at the two-day fundamentals of agronomy and say, hey, we want to do the fundamentals. Talk to us. Let's see what they are. Let's get after that. Because we would love to sit down and talk to you about that at one of the upcoming meetings. The next time we're going to be having one is Columbia, Missouri, February 10th and 11th. And I would love to meet you there. Uh, we're also going to be in Indianapolis, Lincoln, Nebraska, Ankeny, Iowa, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So we've got a pretty good swath we're going to cut, and I would love to meet you guys at one of these meetings. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I really do. I want to encourage you to stop by a betterwaytofarm.com, just a betterwaytofarm.com, and take the profit calculator and see what there is there that you might be able to grab a hold of that would help you and give you some ideas to move forward. I would encourage you to go to our podcast, um, A Better Way to Farm podcast on whatever platform you want to use, whether it's Spotify or Apple or whatever, uh, feel free to go give that a hit and take a look. And while you're there, we would take it as a personal favor. If you'd give us a rating, please give us a review and, and rate the podcast. We'd be eternally grateful for that. So guys, $6 corn, here's our chance. Let's strike while the iron is hot. Let's make sure that every dollar we're spending is getting the most back for whatever it is that we can do. And if you have questions on this, we would love to help you. Feel free to reach out with a text or a phone call, 641-919-1206. Feel free to give us a call and say, hey, I'd like to join the team. I'd like to go give this a go. We've had multiple people who've done that today. They know they're looking, and I know you're looking, or you wouldn't be watching us. So that being said, thank you very much, and I really do hope you're having a better day.